He wouldn't throw you under the bus, would he? <laughs> place my phone. So, not a big deal. That just mean bad works harder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> today I want to talk about something that I've talked about before, but maybe a, a different twist on it. And I want to talk about following me as I follow Christ. Alright? So we're going to start off in John 17. If you have your Bible and you want to read along. While you're looking for that, I'm going to see if I can find my call. Um, So we start off in John 17. We're going to read the whole chapter, so brace yourself. These are all the words of Jesus. And Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them. And they have known surely that I came forth from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you and finish these things. Speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the 
world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold the glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. There was a lot there. There was a lot there. So let me kind of paraphrase that for you. While Jesus was here on the earth, he was one with the Father. And he's praying for his disciples as he's leaving. And he's saying, I have been the example to these guys. I have, I have kept them. I have sheltered over them. But I am leaving now. But I don't want to just leave them. I want them to continue to be one with us. To continue to be one with us. Now I want you to think about that. If we go to the next verse in Corinthians, this is Paul speaking. And Paul is talking to him and he says, Hey, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Can you say that? Can you look at somebody who doesn't know Jesus and say, you want to get to heaven? Do exactly what I do. Follow me. Imitate me. Can you say that? Would you feel confident that the people that are following you and imitating you are going to be with you in heaven? We all have people that follow us, whether you like it or not, whether you want it or not. We have people that follow us. When we started this church, and I was speaking with some of the leaders and some of the people who were uh, kind of counseling, I made the statement multiple times that, that everybody in my church was the leader. I hold true to that today. Everybody in this church is a leader. And I was called out on it several times, and they're like, Jason, it's not possible for everybody in your church to be a leader. I said, in my church it is. Everybody in my church is a leader. Whether you want to admit it or not, you're leading somebody somewhere. Somebody is following you. Somebody is looking up to you. Somebody is mimicking and imitating you. If you're a parent, I can pretty much guarantee you it's your, it's your children. That's where they learn things, is by watching you. A lot of times we see our bad, our bad habits in our kids, and it's like, ooh, I need to change that. But you know, there's people that you don't even realize that are following. And I don't care if you're the oldest person in here or the youngest person in here, people are following you. Probably more so when you're young. The kids below you in grades are looking up to you guys, and they are following you, and they are pattering, pattering. Get that word. They are following you and setting a pattern in their life in how you live your life. Is that something that you would be proud of? Is that something that you feel confident that at the end of the day 
they're better off because they follow you, because they've imitated you. And it's a question that is kind of, if you really take that question serious, will make you stop and think. Do I want somebody to be identical to me? Do I want somebody to take the exact steps I'm taking right now? I'm not talking about my past. I'm talking about right now where I'm walking, right now where you're walking. Would you want somebody to be following? Because that is the confidence that Paul had here. That is the boldness that he had when he was talking to a church, a group of believers who were having some issues, and he's like, let me make this easy for you. Do what I do. Imitate me. If you see me do it, you do it. If you don't see me do it, don't do it. Right? This is what he's saying. Do we live a life that we have that confidence to say that to somebody? To say, hey, How many people here know that they know that they know how to hear the voice of God when they need to? So for those that don't, how do they learn that? It's easy to say, just go listen to the voice of God. And if God was a person here on earth that we could go knock on his door and say, all right, I want to listen to your voice, that would be easy and that would be good advice. But as leaders, we show people how to hear the voice of God. We invite them into our personal world when we need to hear the voice of God. A lot of times when we are a lot of times when we get in situations where we need to hear the voice of God, we tend to push out people away from us. We're like, I need to get alone, and we, we cut them off from the ability to see how do you do this when you need to. I talk about discipleship and mentorship a lot. And as somebody who is discipling people, a lot of times those are the situations where you need to bring somebody in beside you and say, hey, look, this is what's going on in my life, and I really need an answer. Join me in doing this. You know there's a biblical precedence for that. Does anybody know what it is? is good. Let's think about when Jesus was going up to pray. He's like, hey, i got a really big day coming tomorrow. You three come with me. Come pray with me. And he invites them in to his circle. Come pray with me. Come be with me. Come sit up with me tonight. Sometimes as a leader, sometimes as a mentor, we need to do that. We need to open up our personal life to those that we are, that we know that we are leading, that we know that we're discipling, that we know are looking to us for the next step. We need to invite them in to our personal prayer life. We need to invite them in to our personal walk so that they learn what the next step is. Right? It's a bold statement to look at somebody and go, hey, follow me and imitate me and you'll be good. Isn't it? But that's a statement that Jesus made when he was sitting here. When we read John 17, go back and read it where you can take time and you can read it verse by verse. And you will see that what Jesus is doing Come on in. Good morning. You'll see in John 17 where Jesus is speaking. Jesus is speaking about us. You'll see that when he speaks, he's like, Lord, I thank you that you've glorified me, but I've given this glory to them. Lord, I thank you that you have sanctified me, and now I do this so that they can be sanctified. Everything that Jesus does on earth is not pointing toward Jesus, it's pointing toward the Father. Everything he does is pointing toward the Father. 
Jesus said, I am the gateway, I'm the doorway to the Father. The Father is the end goal. And we see that Jesus, in his words alone, said, I only do what I see the Father do. Right? So just like the words of Paul where he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ, Jesus is telling you the same thing. I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I hear the Father say. Jesus is imitating our Father. Paul is imitating Jesus. And as we follow, that's what we do. That's how you learn to make your first steps. How does a baby learn to walk? He sees us walking. And he's like, hey, I want to do that. As a new believer, that's how you do that too. You look around at the other believers around you and go, hey, I want to do that. And you begin to step out on faith. Follow me as I follow Christ. It goes a little bit different than discipleship and mentorship. When we disciple somebody, we know that we're discipling them. And we put forth our best face. We put forth what we want them to see. But as a leader, you have people following you that you don't know. You have people looking up to you that you don't even realize they're looking up to you. You don't get that opportunity to put forth your best face. You don't have that opportunity to only show them what they want to see. Do you? How many people, and this is going to be mainly for our older people, but think about it. How many people, as you've grown up, somebody came up and said, you made such a difference in my life, and you were like, how? I don't even realize it. I didn't even realize, you know, that you were looking at me. I didn't even realize I was having that effect. Our everyday life affects everybody around us in one way or another. When we stand before God, one day we will give an answer for everything that we've done. And sometimes our actions lead people to God. Sometimes our actions maybe lead them away from God. But it shouldn't be that way. We should be able to make that same statement. Somebody mentioned a scripture this morning about boldness and confidence in God. We should have that boldness and we should have that confidence to be able to tell somebody who says, hey, what about this Jesus? What does it mean to be a, a Christian? What does it mean to follow after Christ? To be able to look them in the eyes and say, you know what, follow me. What I do, do. What I don't do, don't do. This is what it means to be a Christian. Because it's easy to follow me. You can see me. You can touch me. You can call me on the phone. I'm easy to get a hold of. You're easy to get a hold of. To tell somebody, well, pray and ask God about it. Who has never been in the presence of God. That's a little confusing sometimes. How many people have heard we are his hands and feet? You know, that's not just to say we are his hands and feet here on this earth. My goal for this week is for us to be able to look at somebody and go, you know what? Follow me as I follow Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Now here's the cool thing about that. One of the last things that I'll mention. When Jesus was speaking to him, he says, Father, I pray that they would be one as you and I are one. As the Father and Jesus are one. When the disciples looked at him and said, show me the Father. He says, don't you get it? If you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Our life should be a point when somebody says, show me Jesus. We should be able to say, don't you get it? If you've seen me, you have seen Jesus. Right? Right? It's not us that live anymore, right? But it's Jesus that lives through us. So that's a factual, biblically accurate statement to be able to make. To say, don't you get it? If you've seen me, you have seen Jesus. And the correlation of that, if you have seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. And he 
he has asked us that we would be one with him as he is one in the Father. Meaning, he is asking the Father that our relationship be identical as his relationship with the Father. There's a lot that goes behind that. How many people think that Jesus could have asked the Father of something and the Father would have said, nah, I don't feel like giving it to you. But right here, Jesus is saying, I want them to have the exact same relationship with you that I have with you. I want them to be identical as I am. I want them to be one with you as I am one with you. But we have to have the confidence in that. We have to be able to stand here and in boldness. It says that we should be able to run before the throne of God with boldness. And if we can do that in the presence of the kingdom of God, in the presence of God on his throne room, how much more should we have boldness here on this earth to say, you know what, follow me as I follow Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. You want to know what Jesus looks like? Look at my life. You want to know what Jesus would do, the WWJD? What would Jesus do? Watch and see what I do. Watch how I react. That's the boldness that we should have. But that boldness comes with truly following. That boldness comes with truly knowing that you're a son of God. With truly knowing that you're head over heels in love with him. And that's the only rule. To be in love with him. Because if you truly love somebody, you're not going to intentionally do something that hurts them. So we don't have to worry about all the rules. We don't have to worry about all the commandments. Jesus told us that as well. What did he say? When they asked him, what was the greatest of all these commandments? Jesus said, look, let me sum it all up. Love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And let me stop you right there. You know what the second greatest commandment is? Love your neighbor as yourself. And if you do those things, you don't have to worry about rules. You don't have to worry about the regulations. Because if you love God, you're not going to do anything that you know hurts them. And if you love your neighbor, you're not going to stretch out your hand and do anything that hurts them. Make sense? So as we step out this week, this is awful short. But as we step out this week, I want you to intentionally look around. Intentionally look around and see who might be following you. Because it doesn't matter if you're a believer or not. It doesn't matter if you're like this perfect Christian or this not perfect Christian. People are following you. It doesn't matter who you are. You're leading somebody. Most of us are leading multiple somebodies. Are you leading them to a place that you would like them to go? When you're away from here and you're away from the church crowd and you're around your buddies, are you leading them toward Christ or are you leading them away from Christ? By your actions, by your words, by the jokes you listen to, by the stories you listen to, by the gossip you listen to, by how you treat the person that cuts you off in traffic, by how you treat the lady that messed up your order at McDonald's, by how we treat people, by how we react to situations. I'm pretty good at treating people good, I think. But inanimate objects like computers that don't do right, I don't treat them as well sometimes. Sometimes old Jason still comes out and the computer goes flying out a window. But it shouldn't be. And that's one of the things that I work on. It's one thing, we all have something in our life that we should be working on. But we should all we should all be boldly enough to say, you know what, I may not have it all together, but I got enough of it together that if you follow me, you're going to make it to heaven. I may not be perfect, but I'm close enough that I know I'm making heaven. I know that I'm stepping through those gates, and if you want to, follow me. Imitate me. Do what I do. Ultimately, the only way you're getting into heaven is belief in Jesus. The only way you're going to make it in there 
us to believe on Jesus, but there's a key to that. Because every person that Jesus went to, he called them one way. He didn't say, believe on me. He said, follow me. Follow me. Every disciple that he came up to, he said, follow me. That's the call that he made to his disciples, and it's the call that he's making today to everybody here. He's not here today, but he has us as his hands and feet, and we make that call. Follow me. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you completely different than you are today. Me? No. But Jesus Christ that lives within me, because it's no longer Jason that lives, but it's him that lives within me. And if you've made that decision to follow him, then it's no longer Chalon that lives, but it's Jesus Christ that lives in Chalon. It's no longer Greg that lives, but it's Jesus Christ that lives in Greg. So, how many is up for that challenge this week? Everybody stand. So normally, normally at this point in time, I would pray a prayer. Usually a prayer of blessing or usually a prayer of, of really wanting y'all to be used. But we're doing something a little more different because I really want us to become a people that knows how to love God. A people that knows how to worship a people that knows how to get into his presence because it's easy to get in God's presence here. It is. It's not so easy when you get that phone call at 2 a.m. It's not so easy when something happens to you. You wreck your car. You come upon it. It's not so easy to get in the presence of God there because now you've got chaos and all kinds of commotion around you. That's why it's so important that we learn how to be in the presence of God now. How we learn how to block out everything around us, block out the people around us, and it just be us and our Father. So, today I would invite everybody here that if you want to be in the presence of God, the presence of God is here. I, I, I mean, you can't walk through those doors this morning without feeling it. But I have two invitations today. If you feel like maybe you haven't been a follower and you want to be a follower today, then I would invite you to come down today and let's become a follower of Jesus today. And my second invitation is to everybody that wants to be in the presence of God today. Just like I did last week and I dismissed it and I say, the service is over, you may go whenever you feel need. I'm fixing to pray and I'm going to dismiss the service and if you need to go, feel free to go. But if you want to stay in worship and you want to stay and be in the presence of God, then I invite you to step foot out of the pews, work your way forward, and as a family and as a group, let's take a few more minutes. Before. And I do speak blessings on them. Father, I just I pray that they would be blessed financially this week, that they would be the head and not the tail, that they would be blessed coming in and be blessed going out, Father, that you would use them to be a miracle to everybody they come in contact with. But not just that. Father, that they would see that miracle and they would be encouraged by that miracle. I ask that you would give them dreams and visions this week of their destiny that you have planned for them. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you need to go, we love you. Have a wonderful week. If you want to join us in worship, I invite you to come forward. And let's take a few more minutes to worship our Father.